on Cave Dweller. Hello. Right, should I, thank should you. I, should I call you Cave Dweller? All right. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. guys. Yeah, all right. Today I have quick Cave Dweller. How are we doing? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's a good uh, seeing you virtually in person. Um, yeah, it's nice to actually see you too. <laughs> <laughs> actually talk to you properly. That's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. We have a. You're a day ahead of me. So you're in Australia. Yeah, so, we're in the future. Yeah, in the future. <laughs> so, where are you from? I mean, I said Australia, but whereabouts? Yep. So I am based in, um, I'm based in Geelong, which is on the South coast of Australia. So, um, I'm right near, uh, the great ocean road, which is where a lot of people come and, um, check out the coast here. So I'm, okay. I'm by the coast. Yeah. So you're right on the water. Is that where you're from? You grew up right um, there, I'm sort of from everywhere in Australia. Okay. I, 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 I was, you know, born far away from here in the middle of Australia and then traveled Victoria and Queensland and these different states. So, but I've been where I, I am now for about 15 years. So, so uh, I think this your, is where I want to stay. Yeah, This is your home. Yeah. This is what I call my home. Definitely. All right. And then, I mean, what I think, what I think misconception, maybe like Americans think this, but we always think like Australia is like the desert. I mean, you, you're not you're not far wrong, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Most of it is the desert. Yeah. Um, only uh, I can't I can't remember the exact statistic, but I think it's under ten percent of our country. Okay, is so inhabitable. it is mostly. Yeah, it's mostly barren wilderness nothingness, <laughs> which That's is mostly, cool in its own way, but mostly in the middle. Um, yes. Yeah. So we all just live on the coast, pretty yeah. much. Well, it's yeah. Like you were telling me before we started, it's you know, nearly 40 Celsius. So, I mean, being by the coast and still that hot, I mean, yes. why would you want to live in the middle? Well, you know, some places in the middle get up to 50 degrees. Yeah, that's what know. I'm saying. It'd be crazy. Yeah. Like some it's... states out here where it gets that high as well. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, we I mean, have you know, yeah. Well, you know, the like America has really extreme temperatures, really cold, and then it can get really hot in different parts of the country. I didn't know that. I knew that it gets really cold, but I didn't know that you get yeah. the same well, we sort have of Death high Valley. temperatures. You know, Death Valley, right? Yeah. That actually has the actually that has the record. I think now yeah. that I think about it, yeah. I, I don't know how I know this, but I think it has the high or did have the highest record. So yeah, um, I think they were bouncing yeah. and back and forth, and I think Death Valley just regained it, like it was as of recent, not too long ago. Oof. It's almost like a competition now, man. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can do, get the hottest know, temperature. Yeah, well, they do all climate ultra change. Yeah, they do ultra marathons in there. Oh no, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's well, it started at night, so it's a few couple Celsius cooler. If that matters, okay. a couple, a couple degrees, <laughs> not much. Yeah. So, how long? Uh, give us just a little backstory of how you be, how Cave Dweller began. Before mm -hmm. you know, if music was in your background, obviously you're a producer, but just give us a little insight. Yeah, so I've been making music um, for, for a long time, since I was about 12 years old. I yeah. um, started recording stuff then, uh, and then I was in heaps of bands for, you know, you know 10, 20 years or so. Um, so mostly rock music and heavy metal and that sort of thing, um, and grunge bands and stuff. But I've been producing as Cave Dweller for about three and a half years um like i toyed with production before then but it's only in the last three and a half years i i sat down and like you know what um uh you know i learned that i'm actually a bit of a control freak when it comes to music i'm a, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and i kind of like i struggled in band environments um and that's on me you know because i always had these strong ideas of how something should, should sound and that doesn't always work when you're with other people so I thought I'll go off on my own. I'll produce my own music uh, in the way that I'll, I want to. And funnily enough, it's only more recently that I've actually started collaborating with people a little bit more um, and trying to um, give up some of that control. But mm -hmm. yeah, so so from rock music and heavy metal into um, production. And I, I started off doing like dubstep, you know, what was trendy at the time. Mm -hmm. And then over time I've moved a, a 
a long way away from that into more the organic house and, um, you know, the Afro house type stuff, which I really enjoy. What what mm. band member were you? Were you playing guitar, drums? Yeah, bass, so <laughs> all, all of that. Yeah, oh. so I've been a guitarist, um, I've been a drummer, and I've been a vocalist as well in different oh. different bands. Yeah, you, you well, I, I say vocalist, but it was more more screaming, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, for metal, for metal. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. wow, and and so just because you're a cult control freak that didn't work out basically well it worked out like um the last band i was in we we got a record label with um transcending records in in the in the usa and you know we did we did okay um but it was we also had we kind of alternated between you know like six members or so mm. and we all lived in different places and it just became really, really stressful, mm. you know, because I, I had this real strong urge that um, we really needed to be doing certain things and hitting certain milestones. So I was putting a bit of pressure on my band members, I think. And it was at a certain point where I'm like, you know what, if I want to take those extra steps, if I want to hit certain milestones, I should be doing that on my own rather than trying to force other people to, you know, build momentum when you know they've got things going on in their life so yeah i think i realized that in myself that i work better generally um on my own which i think which i found with quite a few producers they seem to have a similar sort of story maybe they should have thought that before they started the band yeah well i didn't know at the time i'm talking about all right 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 yeah yeah. yeah. i mean maybe you're trying to motivate them versus control them yeah it's a fine line though between those two things yeah uh and then you said you when you got into music production electronic music production you dabbled in dubstep yeah so when i started out producing i think i was just trying to mimic the styles that i was interested in um so you know the trap and dubstep is what i was listening to because it's um, very similar to metal and rock yeah if you're going to compare if you're going to pair you know aesthetics. A- absolutely yeah i think you're the first person to actually like say that that i've yeah, heard well, but i think yeah. there's a real similarity there yeah trap yeah. hip-hop same thing i mean a lot of that's becoming you know melted in together nowadays but dubstep and metal that's those are the comparisons if you're going to compare, you know. That's what I say when people don't really know, like they say, electronic music all sounds the same or anybody for that matter. I say, what kind of music do you actually like? And then I'll compare it with like, oh, you like classical music. Maybe you'll like trance or something, you know, mm. you know, melodic or something. Or well, go ahead. It's No, it's funny that you mentioned trance because I – what really, really got me into production was I started going to these side trance festivals mm-hmm. in Australia, you know, to try listening to different music and experiencing something else rather than the rock shows I was used to. And it was at these side trance shows that I found a lot of metalheads um, yeah, that, makes that really got into this style. Um, and it really fascinated me with how complex a lot of that music is. Um, and just the, the the energy in that as well so um, i guess that is something that's uh motivated well, me as well well maybe you notice that in this like a side trance environment the people are 100 percent ab- absorbed into the scene the music no so distractions much. yeah i yeah. mean they may be the most diehard electronic oh, music fans yeah. i from my experience that i've seen it I mean, everyone is just into it at the moment. Um, they are the the most intense and most wonderful scene of people, mm-hmm. you know, um, because people who have been to metal shows know that it's an intense type of environment. But I got to say, that's nothing compared to the diehard side trans fans, and you know, they're out there for for days, you know, mm-hmm. dancing to this type of music. Um, <laughs> they just live and breathe it. Yeah, and days, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 140 plus BPM. <laughs> Stop, man. <laughs> so um, yeah, but they're all really lovely people as well, you know, uh, and real music lovers. 
Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So you you went you're playing around with certain styles that you're you know thought you liked or I mean the music you liked. Um mm. what brought you to realizing that you really like making organic house, you know, deep house, this or organic kind of mm. afro house too, I've heard. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, after a while of producing and dabbling um with you know dubstep and things, I realized that you know, I wasn't connecting with it emotionally, which is something that I was missing uh, from that music personally. And so I wanted to, so I started exploring more melodic genres of electronic music. And I started to reconnect with live instruments because I hadn't touched, you know, percussion or keys or guitar in quite a long time. And I found that these instruments were present in, you know, like organic house, um, folktronica, that sort of thing. So it was this blending of like live instrumentation and and electronic music that when I discovered it, I was just thrilled by it because I'm like, it's the best of both worlds, you know. Um, you, you can have these really groovy electronic beats Um but you have the freedom to mess around with live instruments and have the this real, I don't know, it's like a really immersive sound. So when I discovered those genres, I knew that was it. That that is the style I, I want to do. And um, I've also noticed it's becoming more and more popular too. So yeah, that's like nice. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends who you talk to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, some people like that when it's just niche and mm. kind of just always stays indie, but you know, electronic music, as you know, I mean, I mean, even dubstep was underground at one time. Yeah. You know, and became mainstream. And I mean, every genre, I would say, has a commercial part, you know, commercial part of it. I mean, now, at least now, you know, but yeah. I like, I like how you, it's kind of, you infuse different styles, as different subgenres into your tracks. Yeah. Is that, would that be correct? It is. Um, and I've never really known if that was a positive or a negative because I kind of can't help it. Um, you know, I'll set out to make, say, an organic track or an Afro house track. But if the music is leading me in a different sort of direction where it involves these other sort of elements that you might not usually find in those genres, I can't help but pursue it, you know. Um, so on one hand, I think it helps make my music a bit different. Um, and on the other side, I think, you know, for DJs, <laughs> they might find it a little bit difficult sometimes yeah. to, um, to mix my stuff in. Yeah. Or so I'm trying it. to find a balance, you know? Yeah. Or, or I guess label it or categorize it or put it, you know, in a box. But I think mm-hmm. it's a good thing because as someone that makes, you know, someone that makes music, you're keeping true to yourself and original, not like mm-hmm. you said, using these certain sounds that you will always hear in these certain genres, you know? Um, yeah. And that's, what's going to keep you different and unique from all the others. I would, that's just my opinion. So no, I, don't, I don't think that's, no, it's nice to hear that. Yeah. Um, you know, it is that artist's battle. I'm sure you've yeah. probably faced this yourself as well. Is there's this sort of, you got to find this balance between, you know, what's true to you Um but I also want people to listen to it. You know, I'm not just making music for myself. I want other people to enjoy it. So I listen to those genres and I guess I borrow from them and I'm influenced by them. So you can hear these little aspects of, you know, Afro house or organic or even sometimes trance in these songs. But yeah, I I found that I started to enjoy it more when I put more of myself into it rather than trying to mimic a genre or anything like that. I just found it more creative and fun to kind of mess with those perimeters of those genres. So when you're going into producing a track from scratch, is it, do you have an idea or you just start playing with sounds and then you see where it leads you? Um, So more recently I've tried, I've tried to be more intentional about my production. So I'll actually sit down and be like, okay, I want a a song that sounds like this or, or conveys a certain emotion or, you know, perhaps I want to experiment with some percussion and rhythm, you know what I mean, in a certain style. 
Okay. So I'll have a general loose idea. You know, I want to make an, you know, an upbeat sort of tribal track. Um, but that's as, that's as much as I will, um, kind of focus on. So, you know, I'll start a track and I've got these general perimeters. Okay. Tribal, upbeat, maybe. Um, and I will, I guess I'll, I, I, I keep trying until I at least tick this criteria. Uh, and then I see where the, where the track goes. But um, so when I say intentional, I, I will often start a track and it won't hit the criteria I'm going for. So I'll dump it. I'll, I'll chuck, I'll chuck oh, it. Oh, you'll dump it. You won't, you'll yeah. Get, you'll just move on. Yeah. To I, you gotta move on, man. <laughs> Everyone well, says, you know, you gotta you gotta finish every track, but no, you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I was just saying you if you're working on it and it's maybe not going the direction of your intention, something could still come out, you know, come out of Sometimes. it. Sometimes. But I, but you're saying it's not, so you just get rid of it. Or often, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of it's more like me trying to be disciplined with my production in the way I interpret being disciplined um, because I'm, I am going for a certain style and brand now, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I make something that's totally different, like a hip hop track or something like that, I might keep it for my own listening yeah. or send it to some friends, you know, have a listen to this, but I'm not going to put as much effort into it as I guess the style that I want to do uh and grow yeah so, so i figure if you're if you're spending more time on those other tracks uh, i'm not learning the skills i need to develop this this brand and yeah. what is that brand um so yeah so that brand you know what i'm really interested in is tribal mm -hmm. this this tribal feel i don't necessarily it doesn't have to be a specific genre it doesn't have to be like tribal house or what not but you know, I'm really inspired by different cultures around the world, particularly Indigenous culture in, in Australia and the music that they produce. It's just so powerful. So I don't necessarily want to replicate that, but I want to be inspired by that primal sort of tribal sound because I think it conveys into modern dance music um, really well. So, yeah, so I say, I say tribal um, some tracks will be more like that. Some tracks will have elements of that. Um, so I just try to keep like some sort of um, common thread in my music. And it, I guess it usually comes through in like percussion and the instruments yeah. I'm using as well. Well, I saw you, you post on your Instagram, you were doing a, was it a, a live, live performance or on your, one of your recent posts? Yeah, I'm trying to... Um, create a, yeah, I guess I'm trying to move into live performance um, more so. Um, so well, I think performer. it's, it's, I mean, you yeah. have plenty of experience in the band and playing live instruments. So it goes hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's engaging. I think it's engaging to watch. Um, I think it can be quite emotional too because when you're playing live you can kind of go off book you can kind of jam a little bit um so you can kind of go of what you're feeling and you can mix it up in that way um so there's that side of things um i'm not the best dj if i'm being completely honest it's something i need to learn more of so I mean, some know. people like do a lot of that live performance that's what they specialize in yeah, and I think that's what I want to do, you know. I just think it'd be a, a lot of fun to mess around different instruments on stage and stuff. I, mm. Yeah, people, I mean, it's in my opinion, again, it's just appreciate someone that, you know, plays instruments in a performance. I know, I guess, you know, DJ said it's completely different because it's, mm. you're mixing while live performance, you're playing songs, but you're doing it live, you know. Like, it's so much different than someone just pressing buttons and, you know in some cases some djs not even pressing buttons you know david getter yeah <laughs> um, yeah. yeah i i think there's a lot of i think there is a lot of artistry to djing um when i started trying to learn it i mm. i quickly learned that it can be really hard um mm. I mean, you know uh, i get um, the hang of it it's a skill <laughs> yeah. and it depends how 
you know, in depth you want to be on the decks. I mean, the people that are mixing, you know, so quickly and within, you know, minutes, sometimes seconds, you know, that mm -hmm. it takes a lot more skill to just go on the fly and mixing different genres as well. If you stick in the same genre, like it's just a four on the floor, it's not too difficult nowadays because it's so digitized. I mean, I mean, everything's like right in front of you. These CDJs now has like, everything you need to know like right on the screen yeah. it's uh, it's like crazy you know so. i i agree you know you can use those tools to um make it easier on yourself yeah. but i think you can kind of tell between someone who relies heavily on that yeah. compared cool. to someone who's really yeah. knows how to work an audience and yeah. i think that's oh well, yeah um, the, you the, feel it you know <laughs> the, joke, the joke is like i play with my eyes yeah <laughs> you're yeah. just looking down you're not playing with your ears you know you're feeling yeah where's that cue mark <laughs> yeah yeah what i noticed when electronic music became kind of a boom at least out here in the 2007 8 9 10 era this started to get really big out mm -hmm. in the u.s uh with the starting with the big festivals and these djs becoming rock stars i noticed and the producer becoming the star versus the DJ, you know, it used to be the DJ. And then when people wanted to start hearing music, the producer had to become the DJ. So yeah. a lot of these guys were just producers, computer guys, you know, sometimes like just music nerds. They have no idea how to work a crowd, you know, because you're right. It is a talent to know exactly how to control a crowd and make a, crowd feel a certain way and if the music's not working you can have a plan b plan c and so on so it's interesting how a lot of producers had to become djs right and yeah. some of them are just not that good <laughs> unfortunately you know well yeah i mean some people two different talents basically they are two different talents and i mean you need a lot of time i think to dedicate to both if you're mm -hmm. going to do both really well like i know that um you know, an example that comes to my mind, you know, is Alice in Wonderland. She's, oh, yeah, she's very, great. very, very mainstream these yeah. days. But her you know, old, I, I've seen her old performances mm. when she was, you know, is she Australian? Yeah, yeah, oh, she yeah, is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, she, she's. I think she's an example of someone who can do both really, yeah, really yeah, well. She can. Yeah, you yeah. know, well, she seems um, she's too. out there with the four decks, and yeah, and she plays and she cello performing. and does everything. Yeah, yeah. so. You know, complete works. But I think that's kind of describes the hustle that artists and musicians have to do these days. You can't just make music. You've got to do everything, you know. You've got to, well, as you know, um, probably more than I do, about yeah. all the other things you need to do. Mm. Well, there's the whole story, you know, Avicii didn't know how to DJ. Yeah. You know, he I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, if you read about it, he's like, his. I think it was his manager that really helped him out a lot with it, but he had no, you know, cause he was a big producer, you know, he became popular with, uh, bromance and, um, mm. the most popular one. Uh, uh do you know it <laughs> now? Uh, uh, look, I, I know his songs because they're on the uh, radio all the time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know the names. <laughs> um, yeah. I have it in my head. I just can't think of the title, but yeah, he was a, he was a perfect example producer first and then had to become a DJ. Um, have you checked out or heard of Circle? C E R K. -E uh, like those performances that they yeah. do around the world Maybe. in those beautiful locations? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So those I are, watch those. Most, a lot of them are live performances. Not all of them, but a lot of them, they are doing some type of live performance. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, I saw one recently. I think it was Circle where. It wasn't even a, the guy. I forget who it was, um, but he was in front of some pyramids, and he didn't even have a DJ deck. Oh, he, he just was, had. A, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Sebastian La Sebastian Lager. I guess that's how the you, one. How you pronounce his name? I'm not sure. Lager. Yeah, but, but yeah, no, I saw. I've seen that. That was that mind cool. blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, that was sick. To yeah. do that live, like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's a, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, another another good one that I've been watching is um. I think it's called Tullum Sounds. Have you seen this on YouTube? How do you spell that? Uh, T U L U M. Oh, like, tu like Tulum. 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 Like, yeah. Tico. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of live instrumentation 
participation um, in the artists that they have there. And that's how I discovered a lot of, um, you know, these organic producers. Oh, okay. That's what that, I was, I was you know, when they told me about and, that. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking of when you were yeah. talking about all that. So maybe you've seen that. So Yeah. So that's another good one. The live so, performances. It's, getting back to Tribal, you have a song coming out called Out of Body. <laughs> Yes, That's, absolutely. Yeah, comes out uh, January twentieth, twentieth. Yeah, twentieth, twenty. Yeah, just talk about that a little bit. And that's um, what you mentioned in side trance realm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I have the, I have a single coming out out of body through Raw Doggy Records, twentieth of Jan, and. Um, that one, this song that came out, I, I had a very specific idea of what I wanted to do. I w- w- wanted to make a song that was inspired by uh, Indigenous Australian instrumentation. Um, so it includes, um, you know, it includes the instruments that they use. So clapping sticks, didgeridoo, that sort of thing. Um, and I thought that those types of instruments and sounds, they they suit Psytrance, you know? Um, so I ended up making a Psytrance track, you know, because it's where this just kind of works because things like the didgeridoo have this sort of, you know, it's it's a, I consider it a sort of dark sound, you know, sort of a little bit edgy, um, but can really get you kind of dancing and it has that sort of rock feel to it. Um, so, yeah, I sat down and I, I and I wrote a psytrance track. I wouldn't say it's a typical, typically psytrance track. Um, it, it has a looser feel than what you'd mostly find in the psytrance genre. Um, other artists that probably within this type of realm include um, the artist Loud. Have you ever heard of no, those no, guys? They're, They're from Israel, more... I believe. Um, yeah, Israel is popular for yeah. psytrance as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably less so than, you know, Vinnie Vici and all of those huge name acts, but, um, yeah. So it's, it's this, it, it's Psytrance, but it's not that sort of ultra clean, modern Psytrance. It's more organic kind of going back to the roots of what Psytrance, how it's kind of started. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping people like it because yeah. I, I think, it, I think I've heard it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's your first of, I mean, this, of Cave Dweller, this is your first kind of like more, you know, thumping tribal mm. track, I would say. I mean, to, yeah. I mean, you have more high energy, you know, I mean, yeah. I don't think, I don't think you've released anything quite like this. No, yeah. no, this is quite a change up from yeah. what I've done, uh, you know, in the, in the past, it, it is definitely more um, of a track to get people dancing and moving um but it is a bit it is a bit gritty i think and it you know it slightly has this slightly dark trippy yeah, sound the, the bass sound helps that yeah right you're warm yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah kind of groggy yeah, sound groggy. which i really like i like that yeah. sludgy trance and, sound and like you said it's super fast stuff yeah mm. and like you said like that basic exa- example in this song is not so perfectly clean like you would hear, you know, in a, some of these side trans songs, which is nice. No. Like you're, you're doing your own thing once again and putting your like little twist on it. Yeah. And I think that comes back to, I want my songs to sound a little bit organic. They don't have to all the time, but I just find there's something about it that, um, there's something about having a little bit of rawness to a track um, that can make it feel more emotive or more powerful um i know a lot of electronic music goes for super clean um which is totally fine but i think with my music i like that raw sort of aspect to it you know which i guess comes from my background in like rock music and stuff Hmm. cool well we look forward to it again it comes out january 20th sure does out of body i'm excited yeah yeah looking Uh, forward to that Real quick, uh, what other plans do you have for this upcoming year? If you've made any or um, goals yeah. or anything you wanted to say in the, in the year of 2023, since we are here. Um, yeah, my goal is to produce as much as possible. Uh, last year, 
you know, um, I struggle to find the time. And I think this year I want to make the time to produce, you know. And I'm also thinking of doing a couple of collaborations. Um, I started, you know, communicating with other artists um, and, you know, possibly doing, you know, a remix as well as a couple of collaborations with vocalists and things. Yeah. So I guess my goal for this year is to let the music keep growing, you know, take, take it to that next step. So that's what I want to do. Right on. Yeah. Thank you, Quaid. How, how do, how can we find you? How can people find you on the yeah. social universe? Yeah. Well, I'm on Instagram. Um, my little handle thing is cave dweller AUS. So for Australia, cave dweller AUS. Uh, I'm also on YouTube under the same, you know, extension and I'm on SoundCloud and all streaming networks as well. So yeah, come and say hi to me. I like communicating with people and actually talking to people. So if you jump on Instagram and say hi, I'll definitely get back to you and we'll have a chat. Awesome. Well, thank but, you um, so much. Um, thanks yeah, for thank having you. me on. Yeah, thank you, Cave Dweller. And yeah. <laughs> we'll it, more, yeah, we'll, we'll hear more from you. Yeah. Um, thanks for supporting artists, man. You know, oh, it's yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing what you do. So I just wanted to, to shout out to you. This is it's, yeah, no, I, I just love your work. Yeah. Oh, thank you. No, no problem. Yeah, I um yeah, I just did I was working on that little visual today and I came oh. about from it. And I was I can do like just playing stuff too if you just want like you know the album cover and the, no. the bait <laughs> yeah I don't I don't, care. I don't usually do that for myself but <laughs> I can you know like just the normal ad that you see when you're like see music producers like advertising it's just the album cover I mean and that's fine too you know I mean you could do that yourself honestly but <laughs> I think what what you did and what I've seen man I, I love it it's yeah. um it's so cool. I don't know how you've done it. Um, well, yeah. You've I mean, got... Go ahead. <laughs> no, go on. No, I was just saying, you know, I'm, I'm a, like, I'm, my background's in, like, I'm visual, you know? So, I don't know, it just come, it comes easy. I mean, and especially when I'm working with music, it just goes hand in hand. Like, just, I just, the music, I let it, kind of like you were saying, I let it, what I feel comes out. That's basically it. And uh, I use... For like these type of videos, I it's all like stock footage, so mm -hmm. it's you know free free, uh, free to use and uh, yeah, I just let it. I just I play the music and I search for videos and whatever like gravitate toward with the music and the visual. I'm like, oh, maybe this will look good and kind of like you know I'll start it out and then like if it doesn't, then you know scratch it and then. But what I see is what I feel and vice versa. <laughs> I, I I think it's I think it's great. I think you've got a real knack for it because it looks so intentional. It it fit the music, you know, from the little snippet that you sent through today. Yeah, so, that's what that's what I try to do. I try to yeah um yeah sync the music with the visual together. Like that like forget I can't think of the instrument sounds like maybe the bass, but it I try to like hit those marks. You know, sometimes it's when I'm playing around. It's, it'll be by accident and i'm like oh this looks good i'm gonna do it this this and this here you know i mean Happy like anything, accident like yeah like anything even when you make music you know there's accidents that are great <laughs> yeah you know and it, it can make all the difference but um i think you've under you've really understood the type of vibe that this track has and that's <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you like it you know that's, uh, yeah. yeah no i love it it ticks all the boxes for me it's that style which um i wish i could do i'm not the best with visual yeah. art so it's wonderful like having someone like yourself interpret the music in the way that you've done that yeah so well, i'm glad you like it i appreciate it man it's it's good and i'm i'm, I'm loving being on raw doggy records i think it's awesome. gonna be a lot of fun man yeah I'm, I'm gonna do my part to help you out and hopefully you get some people listening and following and so on you know absolutely man i hope yeah. so you know yeah. but um thanks again i appreciate You're welcome. it all right man Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Or well, night for you. Night, night, yeah. Night. All right. I'll talk All to right. you later. See ya. Yeah, bye. Thanks.